you know that the three things that we're going to focus on, we've talked about these quite a bit in a lot of the videos we did leading up to this, are the pillars of success. We feel like those are, number one, you need u- unique positioning so that you stand out in the market, so that the customer will notice you, so the customer will have a reason to pick you over somebody else. Two, you need value pricing or value-based pricing. Essentially, that we're not going to bill by the hour. We're not even going to do fixed prices. We're going to price based on the value to the customer. And then in addition to that, we feel like the third piece you need is the ability to innovate, to be constantly innovating. Hector calls it disruptive innovation. The idea is that you don't get to a point where you've got, all right, I've got my positioning in place. I've got my pricing in place. Now I'm just going to coast. I don't think you ever get to coast in business. And so we want to kind of help get you to a point where innovation becomes a natural part of what you're doing. So those are kind of the three pillars that we want to cover. I'm going to turn it over to Hector and let him take it further. Hi, guys. So I, I second Kirk's sentiment. Thank you very much for, for taking the plunge and being the first group, first cohort uh, to do this. We, uh, we certainly want to hit this out of the park, and we, we want you to walk out of this uh, you know, with more confidence, uh, a, a unique uh, strategy, uh, a, a way to, to run a business that, that you enjoy more. Right. And a lot of the learning is going to come from within. Uh, we're, we're just here to prompt. That's what the old MBA program called it. I thought it was kind of genius. It's just a prompt. Like we're there just like nudge you over so you can build your own path. So um, I want to talk about some of the themes, general themes that we'll be managing uh, throughout this program. Okay. The, the first theme that we're going to be doing the first two weeks is that different is better than better and uniqueness Trump's different. So you're going to go through a two-pronged strategy, one in which you will position yourself as different. And then once you find your voice and you find exactly wh- which way you want to go, uh, you're going to be unique. As an alt accountant, what you essentially are is an alternative to what people perceive an accountant to be. So this uniqueness is going to be a very uh, personal process that you and your firm uh, will go through and you will adopt it as your own. The second uh, overall theme is that value trumps price, is that price is a consequence of the value that we're going to discover, the value that we're going to provide, and the value we're going to communicate to our clients. So when we start talking about pricing, this theme is going to come in, be very uh, uh, prevalent. And lastly, effectiveness trumps efficiency. And in order to be effective, you many times you must risk being inefficient, okay? And the accounting profession is obsessed with efficiency. All the accountants will be obsessed with effectiveness and we will not care about being inefficient in the process. The process of innovation, the process of disruption, the process of creating something new is extremely inefficient, okay? You're gonna have to spend time thinking, spend time trying, trial and error, testing the market until you innovate and create something new. If you were to use standard accounting industry metrics, like how much time are you spending on innovating this and there, you will never get uh, a go to go innovate and go disrupt. So in order to be effective, in order to be innovative, you must risk being inefficient. So those are the three sort of overarching themes that you're going to be seeing throughout the six weeks. So uh, describe your target customer. So we're gonna start um, with your vertical. Uh, your vertical is gonna be an industry, a sub-industry. It could be the revenue size, the company size. It could be the number of employees. It could be the asset size. It could be the geographic location. It could be the ownership structure. It's basically, your vertical is how people describe themselves, how your customer describes themselves. Now, you don't have to focus on an industry. That's okay if you don't feel comfortable with doing, hey, I have to pick a specific industry and stick with it. We would like for you to go down the rabbit hole and pick one just so you can get your juices flowing around what this will look like in terms of communication. But if, if your vertical is going to be something else, a size of the client or location or ownership structure, that's okay with that. But also we want you to talk about a horizontal. The horizontal is the specific problem that you solve or the specific solution that you provide. 
right? So is it managing inventory? Is it improving cash flow? Is it keeping them or staying them compliant? Is it helping them become bankable, help them raise capital, help them exit, help them restructure debt, help them bring a partner, get rid of a partner. So you want to communicate your sweet spot. This is, this is what you're good at, right? Not who you're good working with. This is what you're good at. And the third component is you want to be able to describe your typical client's journey. So what condition are they in when they call you, right? You know, they owe taxes to the IRS. Their books are a mess. The inventory is all over the place. They don't trust their employees to touch their books. Uh, somebody embezzled, you know, uh, funds. In, in, you know, my last bookkeeper, uh, you know, was in cahoots with one of my vendors and they stole money from me. Whatever area you specialize in, you want to write, you want to, you want to communicate what is the general condition of that target customer. And then you want to uh, you know, describe what is the journey going to end, what's going to be the end result, right? Which is the, the, what they call the desired future state. So um, you're going to, we're going to uh, one of the resources has a video, that, which is the Dan Sullivan question, and they kind of explain kind of the theme around uh, describing that. So um, some of the inspirations I want to give you a couple of thoughts to think about is to serve all is the same thing to serve none, okay? When folks hear you that you can help everybody, it doesn't sound like you can specifically help me with my specific problem. Remember, every single uh, customer believes that their business is unique. Every single customer believes that their customer base is unique. Every single customer believes that their circumstances are unique, okay? So if, if you communicate that you serve them all, no one feels that you serve them specifically. Also, we talked about this in the, pod, in the podcast last week, full service is no service. Again, we do everything, right? We are a full service firm. That is, again, not going to speak to the person that is looking for a specialist to solve a specific problem. And your firm's success will be measured by the customers you don't take, by the projects you don't take. And think about that. Think about every single project or customer that you have taken in the past that you regret taking, okay? Would you like to define your firm by those or would you like to firm define the firm by the ones that you liked? So build a business in, in which you specifically have a proclamation around the customers that you don't take, type of projects you don't take. And also, um, when you take a position and you stand for something, if you truly stand for it, you stand against everything else. So once you pick a position, it's important that you follow through and you don't falter, you follow the process and you focus. So the, San, the Dan Sullivan question, which is the desired future state portion of the, your target customer is, imagine you're sitting with your customer and we'll, we'll discuss the value conversation, the sales process in a different one. But this is just get you thinking about, you know, what is your purpose? What, what is your why? why people hire you. If you were sitting with your customer at the end of, a, of, of your presentation, of your discovery call, and your question says, if, you were having this, if we were having this discussion three years from today, and you were looking back at your experience professionally and personally from working with us, what has to have happened in order for you to be happy with your progress? So this is the imagine the future, describe it to me. If you can get your clients to Imagine the future and describe them to you. They give you the entire roadmap of that, what, what is it that they want to get from you and what you want them to achieve. Now, to get to the point where you can sit down with the client and get them to answer that, you have to build a high level of trust. In this exercise, we're talking about positioning. So take it one step back in terms of giving people a preview or a hint of what this experience will be like as after you engage. So think about this as a standard question that you ask to all your new customers, right? And this is the last question that you ask at the end of your presentation or discovery call. So take it one step back in terms of how you want to communicate proactively that this is the approach that you take, okay? The Dan Sullivan question will render a unique answer from every one of your customers. However, if you're really well positioned and you have a target customer, all of your clients' uh, answers will be very, very similar, right? At least in theme. Why? Because you're solving the same problem for everybody. You're focused.